um, set forth by the governor. Is it okay that I remove this for? You can move when you're talking. While I'm speaking? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that anybody would uh, ever mistake me, but. You know, speak in the mics, everybody. Make sure, and you can remove your mask when you're speaking. Thanks. Uh, again, uh, just a general uh, overview, uh, in, per the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, dictation by the, the governor uh, in terms of distancing and uh, spacing, uh, we were meeting all the guidelines that have been met, that have been required <clears throat> going forward. Um, I welcome everybody that's on, ra on the radio and on TV at that moment. By the way, we really need to get our ratings up, so please mm -hmm. dial in. Um, With that, um, I'll ask for a general roll call. Becker. McMahon. Present. O'Flaherty. Here. Klein. Here. Doe. Here. Wright. Chair Maxwell. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Um, secondarily, I'll ask for an approval of the agenda. Any additions or deletions? I move approval. I, I second. Second. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Seconded by O'Flaherty. Thank you. Um, at this point, we'll go you back. Need a voice to, vote on that, please. I'm sorry. Yeah. Need a voice vote, vote, please. Approval of the minutes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passed. Um, public participation portion. The uh, the minutes, September 8th, 1st. I, didn't we just, I'm sorry. The agenda. Uh, the agenda. I'm sorry, approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. I move to approve the minute from the September 8th meeting. First and seconded. I second. second. Oh, 30. Yep. Thank you. And a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Now, uh, we'll go back to public participation. Um, anyone wishing to speak to anything that's not on the agenda for this evening uh, is welcome to do so now. Uh, if you do, please come forward and um, announce your name and address uh, as you come forward. Uh, otherwise, we will continue onward. Trust me. Trust me. I'm, I, I'm, I'm <sighs> equally off kilter at the moment. Um, okay, so we're going to open it to new business. The public hearing uh, petitioned by Pepsi Development for the approval and zoning amendment from the CBD Central Business District to PDR Planned Development Residential District Preliminary Plan Development and waivers uh, <coughs> to the Unified Development Ordinance. Um, for the property located at 2000 South 4th Street, um, Johan DeKalb Suites. Um, I, and I, I assume that you uh, have something prepared for this? Commissioner will speak. I would just note the uh, Commissioner Beck arrived at 6.05. Okay. Um, so the petitioner speak. Yeah. We have uh, three people that have, have chosen to speak on this. Um, I, I hope that I'm taking them in order, and I apologize if I'm not. But um, Rita and John McMatt. We'll have this applicant speak first, and then we'll get to the okay. comments after. Yeah. Can we ask that you speak up? Yeah, sorry. Fluffy Pappas, Vice President of Pappas Development, here to answer any questions uh, we have about the uh, proposed development. Why don't you go ahead and present what you're planning to construct? Yeah. Do you, do you want? <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> the old municipality building site here, we're proposing uh, to build four buildings. 
Uh, in these four buildings, we're gonna have 78 units total. Uh, it's gonna be a mix of studio apartments, uh, one bedroom apartments, and uh, several two bedroom apartments. There's gonna be no commercial on this space. It's gonna strictly be uh, residential units. Um, really pushing our product that we've delivered. I, I'm pretty sure everybody knows now the track record. It's really pushing that product to the next level here. Each one of these four buildings is gonna be built like, a, uh, like an individual house or mansion. Uh, they have these beautiful, gorgeous entryways, uh, stunning staircases and foyers as you walk into these buildings. Um, and really the market here is gonna be building on that uh, young, middle-aged, older, professional, downsizing retiree, uh, traveling work professional uh, that again wants that fully furnished, all utilities included, hotel style amenity. Uh, we did a little work here with the exterior of the building. We really wanted to make it flow beautifully with the neighborhood. Uh, we did three uh, different elevations, front elevations uh, of the building here that you see uh, on the screen. Uh, beautiful stone, beautiful brick, uh, great roof elevations, I think will look really fitting in, uh, in, in the, that area. Uh, big stress is uh, green space. We're gonna be maintaining all the green space that's there currently, as well as adding additional green space. Uh, we're gonna take that piece very seriously. Uh, again, our goal here is to fit in with the neighborhood, not just kinda <coughs> brazenly come in here. Uh, we've talked to several community members. Everybody seems pretty thrilled with, with this uh, proposition here. Uh, better than looking at an empty building for a lot of years. We're proposing bringing in some really high-end apartments, uh, some really high-end people, and really cleaning up and transforming this area. Uh, with that, uh, to, to be honest, I'd really like to open it up for questions. Uh, we've got a little dialogue going here. Yes, uh, all of these apartments, as I understand, are going to be rented? Yes. Furnished? Yes. So can people sign up for a lease of more or less than a year? Is there any time limit? My minimum is 12 months. So the minimum lease requirement is 12 months. <clears throat> uh, if somebody wants to, to rent further than that, of course, they're, they're uh, able to do so. But uh, they will be minimum 12-month uh, leases. Minimum of 12 months. Yeah, minimum of 12 yeah. months. Yes, that's correct. I was a little concerned about parking. It's You're going to have a younger group, right, that you're, aim, you're well, aiming Well, I wouldn't necessarily call it a younger. Well, it depends on what's considered younger, right? Now, younger, meaning anywhere, I would say the average age here is going to be from, you know, your early 30s up to 80 years old. I consider all that young. So well, that's, that's younger than me. So I figured <laughs> that's going to be right there. <laughs> but it's not going to be uh, a 20-year-old frat house. That I can promise you. So you don't expect a lot of turnover? No, no. In judging from our prior properties and kind of our, you know, that kind of little track record we have going here, uh, turnover's average. Uh, but we likely have less significantly less than the industry average. You, you will not see people coming and going. This will not be a Motel 6, if that's what you're asking. Why would somebody who's moving out of their home, which is fully furnished, want to move into an apartment that's fully furnished? I'll tell you why, because they're being overtaxed by the state. They're sick and tired of their house and their upkeep. They want to know what their liability stands at the end of every month and let the, less of the, the rest of the pressure fall on me as the landlord. They could continue to live a beautiful life in a gorgeous space that I'm gonna provide for them. And that few bucks they spend on taxes every year and landscaping they don't wanna take care of, they can hopefully take a trip to Florida with the family. That's why somebody would downsize and move into my building. And that happens often. We Lynn Smith, one of the objectors, was concerned about parking. She felt there'd be a lot of on-street parking yep. in the neighborhood, and it seemed to me that that would be the case with the limited parking off-street. So to answer that question, uh, we're proposing 78 units, most of which are studios and one-bedrooms, um, and we're proposing 
over 140 parking spaces. I can promise you anybody that shows up to move into a one bedroom or a studio is not showing up with multiple, car multiple cars. It's just not how things work anymore at all. Uh, they're gonna show up with one vehicle, if any. So we have plenty of parking for, for everyone to bring one vehicle. We have plenty of parking for people to bring two vehicles. Okay. So street parking <clears throat> definitely not be an issue in this area whatsoever. I appreciate that. And I, I, I assume based on the fact that this is um, roughly the third project that you've proposed um, in the area that you understand the demographics and the, the viability yep. of, of the people that would be potentially running there. And then I certainly understand that they would not be, um, you know, the typical renters that would come and go in the course of a year. Okay. In most cases. I can't understand a word you're saying sorry. through that oh. mask, and I don't know that anybody else. I'm sorry. I said I assume that you understand the demographics and then, you know, this being the third proposed project that you yep. guys have done, that you realize that there is a need for this and that um, these people will not, uh, again, be, uh, you know, a single year renter or a, a two year renter for, for the sake of argument, but that they, you know, will be an extended stay for the duration of however long they want to be in the neighborhood. So it's not apartment rental, I guess, as, as much as it is um, a lifestyle choice? Is that yeah, call fair it to say? More so a, I would call it a condo living. Yeah, it is a lifestyle. Again, you know, when, when you brought up would somebody uh, leave their house and all their belongings that's fully furnished and would they, they jump into this lifestyle, I would say yes, they would, again, because of the benefits I mentioned prior. So uh, we don't see turnover high here. I would say on average a building like this would retain 60, 65% of its residents year over okay. year. It, it uh, will not be a high traffic building. Not from our, our history with these buildings and uh, not from what I'm seeing as far as who's looking to rent in these buildings and, and with this style of, of building. I'm sorry, Steve, did you have yes, I'll, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, specifically uh, the numbers 60 to 65%, the range, what, what is that being based on? Just personal experience and being in the community for over 40 years. Other properties? Yeah, other properties. And again, it, being in the community for 40 years, I would argue that Pappas Development has been the most active development company in the area, right, for quite some time. I think we have a real grasp on the need. And I 100% feel confident that we've captured the need that's been forgotten for a lot of years in this town. And that's high-end condo living for visiting guests, retiring guests, or whoever wants to come into DeKalb County to spend money. It, it seems to me the, prop, the property that you had put, that has been approved, that's in development right now, down um, on Sycamore in DeKalb, across from the Fifth Third Bank, that seemed to be uh, short-term living for people coming into town for specific business or recreational purposes. But this seems to be more residential. Is that true? I think there's Can a misconception there with the Isaac Suites is what you're referring mm -hmm. to. No, the Isaac Suites will not be a short-term stay, holiday and Motel 6 situation whatsoever. Uh, it's it's gonna cater to, uh, call it a 12 maybe at the shortest, a nine month lease. Okay, because originally, I think when that was presented, it was presented as a six month minimum lease. I personally didn't come forward and present it with a six right, month, no. month lease. Now, I'm sure there's chatter, you know, everybody uh, has an opinion, but it's, that's not the case. But specifically, it, these units, you'll these have a minimum. Specifically, these units are different. Now, the Isaac that you're speaking to, and I, I don't want to pull too much time towards that, but th that's a different animal. Okay. Yeah, and that's, I'm just trying to come to grasp of delineating the difference between the Isaac and, and these units? The Isaac is is gonna strictly be suites or studios. Uh, the Isaac will have same length leases, potentially down to nine months. It's in an area surrounded by the hospital. So one thing I've, we've been missing and one thing I've been getting calls about nonstop has been traveling physicians and doctors coming in town for uh, you know what ha what have it, um, not having a place to stay, not having a genuine, nice, 
clean cut places stay. Not you know, to interrupt you, and I and I, I appreciate the the question, but I, I do want to stay on topic at least for the moment. Yeah. Um, and I'd like the city to make their presentation, if they may. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, you have a in your packet of the staff report, so a little background of where we uh, have been since uh, leading up to tonight. So the city did release uh, or ask for RFPs for the site. Uh, back in June, uh, the Committee of the Whole, the City Council on August 10th, heard from three proposals. On that night, they chose the preferred the Pappas proposal, which you see in front of you. Um, that includes, as described, four buildings. Uh, there's 76 units, uh, amenities such as a meeting space, exercise rec facilities um, in there also, open space, covered parking, open air parking also. And I'll get to parking in a little bit. Uh, this would be a TIF uh, request. That's not something the commission looks at, but just a little background. Um, there was a purchase offer of the 2.5 acre site is 600,000. TIF funding request is 750,000 to cover the demolition, underground utilities, sidewalk uh, improvements, other TIF eligible cost. On September 14th, the council approved a resolution approving the proposal from the Pappas development that you see tonight. The resolution accepted the proposal contingent upon the applicant getting the zoning approval, which they've started tonight for the hearing. And also there'll be a redevelopment agreement and real estate purchase agreement, and that's scheduled for the council meeting a week from tonight. Uh, that a vote on the September 14th was unanimous from the council. So in front of you, the site is zoned CBD, Central Business District, and they're requesting a rezoning to the planned development residential district. CBD district, uh, only dip dwelling units on the above the ground floor is allowed. So the rezoning was needed to PDR. There's a few waivers that are requested um, regarding the uh, density, the open space, which they actually do have enough open space per the UDO, so that's being removed, and also a setback. Uh, the comp plan um, does, of course, call for institutional, reflecting the city hall, and actually the southeast portion of the block was. Uh, tab for commercial actually. So you see the plan has uh, four buildings. There's two different types of buildings, a total of 76 <coughs> dwelling units. Uh, two of the buildings will contain 16 dwelling units and the other two will contain 22. Uh, the bedroom count, the building one type, that's uh, will include the 12 one bedroom units, three two bedroom units and one efficiency unit. Uh, the building type two, what, that's one with the 22 units, those will all be efficiency units. The units range, as mentioned, uh, fully furnished, range from about 500 to 800 square feet, the vast majority around that 500 square feet or a little bit more. Um, uh, the applicant mentioned the, uh, the rent at market rates and the type of unit, the type of people they plan to draw has been described. Uh, this uh, use will serve a transition from the downtown area to the single family and two family areas that are to the east and south of the site. So it's a good transitional type of use. Uh, the elevations, which you saw a little bit um, here, uh, we st staff worked with the applicant from the initial submittal to uh, break up the building a little bit more, different materials, a uh, little bit of break up in the elevation too, so it's not a long type of building. Uh, so we worked with them on that. Um, access, as you can see, will be provided from um, Franklin and Grove Street, no access uh, from South 4th or South 5th Street. As mentioned about parking, so our UDO does have a parking formula for these, for all types of units. Uh, it's one and a half parking spaces for every one bedroom dwelling unit or efficiency and two and a half spaces for every two bedroom unit. So when you break that down, there's a total of 120 spaces required and they, according to the plan, there is 130 spaces provided. That includes between the open air parking and the enclosed uh, car garages, which you can uh, see here, that's yellow long, or the enclosed garages. Of course, the open air parking is here. So they do have enough parking per our UDO. Um, the uh, recommended standards include the submittal. Of, so what is presented is a preliminary plan. There's a requirement that they submit a final development plan, which will include all of utilities, fully engineered, showing the stormwater requirements, uh, landscaping, lighting, et cetera, will be required prior to them constructing this. And that ought to be submitted, reviewed by the city, and meet our UDO requirements. They'll need to vacate the alley in the middle of the site too, um, and that will need a council action. 
So just discussing briefly the waivers a little bit and then the density, the PDR really doesn't mention density like a requirement, so I just use the multifamily development uh, uh, district, the highest one in terms of density. Um, that equates to a density for this site of about 30.4 30 dwelling units per acre. How does that compare to others? Cornerstone is 60 dwelling units per acre. Plaza de Calb is 57.5 dwelling units per acre. And Agora Tower is 31.3 dwelling units per acre. So it's very similar in density to Agora Tower, what that will be, just for some reference. Um, Common open space, there's a minimum 15% required in the UDO for PDR sites. They do provide, uh, did provide a formula or calculation, and they have open space, as you see on the plan, of 21%, so they do meet that requirement. There is a buffer requirement for uh, 30 feet for site zone PDR when you have adjoining residential that is less dense, uh, when it says it's adjacent. Um, so the, the UDO is not clear if adjacent means directly next to or across the street. So uh, we threw this in there anyway, but the uh, buildings, the homes, the existing homes on South 4th and Franklin will be between 90 and 100 feet away from the proposed buildings, way beyond that uh, 30 feet. Any rezoning, of course, we have the findings of fact, as we do on every one. Uh, the first finding exp explained in the report looks at the comp plan, the trend of development in the area. Um, comp plan from 2005, of course, shows institutional and commercial for the site. We've had a few downtown plans approved since then, and they do recommend um, higher end residential units in the downtown area, so they're meeting that requirement. Uh, we take a look at the conformance with the UDO, which they do meet except for the waivers, which I discussed. Look at the uh, effects or impacts on the adjacent neighborhood. Um, we believe that the zoning, proposed zoning of PDR would not be detrimental effect on the surrounding area. It's a good transition between downtown and the single family and two family areas south and to the east. Uh, this site currently obviously doesn't produce any property taxes, so it will meet a housing need in the community and will also generate property taxes for, this, uh, for the city and other taxing <coughs> districts. Um, the recommended development standards will require some middle of the final development plan prior to issuance any building permit, require showing all utilities, how storm water will be handled, landscaping and lighting. And adequate public services, the utilities are already surrounding the site, into the site, so those will have to just be connected to the uh, four buildings and meet the requirements. As I mentioned, they do have 10 extra parking spaces based on the formula in the UDO. In terms of public comment, prior to the agenda posting on October 1st, we did uh, receive a couple correspondence. One was from uh, an email from uh, Luis Calderon at 308 South 3rd Street, data 912. I uh, had just some questions regarding the project, which the staff answered, and that is in your packets. We also received a citizen response form from Lynn Smith at 312 South 5th Street, indicating they do not support the proposal. Uh, the form notes the city uh, they believe has too many apartments and the development will create noise, lighting, and parking issues. A copy of that is also in your packet. And then over the weekend we receive, did receive an email from uh, Mr. Trent Sexton of 226 South 5th Street. Um, I came over the weekend, a copy is provided to you in front of you tonight. Um, I don't believe they're here tonight, so we'll, uh, I think the, oh you are? Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, so. Uh, I think through the staff report, and we'll follow up after the comments with some uh, things addressing. So we did have a uh, sample motion, and uh, in conclusion, the staff recommends strong approval, recommend approval of this uh, rezoning. I think it'd be a positive impact on the community and the surrounding area, generate property taxes, and meet a housing need that's seen in the city. Uh, get, serve a good transition between the single family and two family and the downtown area. So we have a sample motion that recommends approval. It lists the preliminary development plan, Exhibit A. It's the plan that you saw up there tonight, plus the architectural renderings, plus the floor plan is part of that too. Plan development standards, a maximum of 76 residential units. It includes accessory uses being allowed, uh, no commercial being allowed on there, and also the uh, regulations in the UDO must be met, uh, except for the two waivers I mentioned. Also, as I uh, noted too earlier, the approval of the uh, final development plan and final plat will need to be done uh, with staff's approval, meeting the UDO and make sure it's in compliance 
strong compliance with the preliminary plan. Photometric plan, which is a lighting plan, should be submitted. They'll need a plan of vacation for the alley, going through our requirements per the UDO, landscape plan, and a couple minor cleanup items on the site. I did want to have Zach Gill, our city engineer, is here. Uh, in the email from Mr. Sexton, there was a, uh, uh, several comments. One was, which I want Zach to address, was the uh, uh, sanitary capacity or issues in the neighborhood currently right now, and if there's any effects with this project on that particular issue. So I'll have Zach Gill uh, kind of explain that now. Just a little groundwork to lay um, for those that aren't aware, the sanitary sewer system is actually owned and operated by the Kishwaukee Water Reclamation District. It is a separate agency from the city. We work very well with them and, and often, but just understand that it is a separate agency, a public agency, but a separate one from the city. Um, I spoke with their engineers, um, prompted by this correspondence. They're, uh, they're not concerned with the actual sanitary flow capacity. There's an 18-inch sanitary main underneath Franklin that runs to the uh, west. So in a vacuum, in that situation, there's plenty of pipe capacity there. Um, the issue that was described is something that we refer to in the industry as I&I. &I. It stands for infiltration and inflow. It's when storm water gets directly into the sanitary sewer uh, and creates what we call a surcharge. And that's why what was described where they witnessed the sanitary district kind of evacuating those sanitary lines into the storm system because it's been so commingled that the pipe doesn't have capacity. Um, that is a result from underground service lines. When you have a storm, as that water percolates, as it gets through other areas, it goes into the floor drains in the old house. I have a house right here in the Kelp built in 1902. I got the two floor drains right there in the basement. Uh, water that goes in the basement is going directly into the sanitary sewer, um, as well as out in the yard, those individual services. They obviously over time have ruptures, have cracks. They may be constructed of orange berg and are no longer even fully functioning. Um, so coincidentally enough, and this is a positive, in speaking with their engineers at the sanitary district's board meeting this month, they are going to take up, and it sounds like pass, a new program to assist individual residential homeowners financially with repairing these service lines that are contributing heavily to this I&I. &I. Um, so again, it's not related to this project, but it's a nice um, kind of coincidence that it's there now that this has been brought to light. Um, I would say this development will actually help the I&I &I problem given that there's multiple old services laying underneath the City Hall parking lot right now. There, someone probably plugged them with a little bit of cement 60 years ago and I doubt that that has held up. So we would actually see a reduction in I&I &I from the development of this lot. Zachary, I want to second that. That's the truth. That's 100% the truth because this has been an issue going on a lot longer than this proposal has been going on. And I definitely know because I've spoken to uh, community members uh, uh, directly impacted with this project, neighbors. And the sanitary issues uh, is a concern. Our buildings proposed here make zero impact on that. But maybe it does draw light onto the specific area and we help out the neighborhood by uh, bringing the sanitary uh, to where it should be. And just wanted to mention in closing, the district has an interest in working with the city for us to help promote this to our individual residents. And of course, we'll do that as robustly as we can, get everyone working together as a team. Um, there's free money on the table. That's always nice to have um, if you own an older home. So, Thank you, Zach. Uh, that's all with the staff report. So. Dan and I apologize, I don't have any notes in front of me. <clears throat> so uh, is, there, is it open to public comment based on the uh, people that are- Yeah, the, anybody in the audience, the people that have given you a sheet. We do have one person on Zoom, the IT uh, tech has mentioned. So. And, and while you're there, I would like to open again to comment by the, by the, the uh, council. I, I mean, if anyone has any further questions uh, before we open it to public comment. Yeah, please, any questions, don't be shy. You mentioned green space. You're gonna you're gonna add some green space to the area. Okay. Oh, definitely add some green space. Particular, gonna yeah. Use project so so the green space maintained right now 
is, is going to be in place. All those beautiful large trees, they're not going anywhere. Uh, we're going to be adding an additional layer of green space. So there's the curb, there's uh, the distance between the sidewalk and the curb where there's right now already some existing green space. We're going to make that a lot more beautiful while saving all the really mature and old trees. So that area is going to be fantastic. Then we're going to double the green space by going past the, the uh, sidewalk and putting another row of green space on the property. Um, so definitely, definitely not removing any green space, only adding and maintaining. Because remember, this is an abandoned building at this point, owned by the city. But if you circle around it for the next three, four, ten 10 years and it's not worked on, there's not going to be much green space to save. So we're proposing gorgeous green space that will be maintained, we'll take a lot of pride in, and I think the whole uh, community and neighborhood will love. Yeah, there was a question there. If the parkway trees would be saved, those are the trees between the sidewalk and the curb. The, those, and those parkway will be trees saved. will be saved, yes. Yeah, there may be one. Uh, the access, as you can see, it pretty much follows the current alley that's on Franklin and Grove. It's a little bit wider with this proposal, so at the <clears> most, there'll probably be one maybe existing parkway tree that might be lost, but, but the vast majority will be saved as they are now. Okay. Uh, and again, I apologize. I, normally, I would go to close the public hearing at this point, but I want the audience participation. Yes, involved. you need to open so, the um, hearings. Open. Can I address the people that are? Yes. Yeah. Um, and again, I have a of oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, please. Shoot yeah. Away. So my biggest concerns on this project are really the number of units yep. and the design. I still don't like the design, um, but it's. It's a lot of units in this block. And I know that the, the density that is comparable to other projects that are pending and existing, but that's a lot of units. I, I honestly had hoped to see something more like townhouses. The, I, the idea of having high-end rental, I, I like that as, a, as a, uh, a different use for this space, I think that having it residential is is really quite right. is the way it needs to go it's just a lot of units and that's that's the thing that makes me the most uncomfortable is the volume you know if it if we were talking about 28 townhouses so genuine concern mm -hmm. okay now what i'd say the the actual biggest risk uh, mm -hmm. with any town whether it's the calvary or anywhere else is any time a developer is building more than two two bedroom units mm -hmm. that's when you get into trouble and that's the truth when you start having three bedroom and four bedroom townhouses they might look nice for the first year but that's a recipe for disaster in a lot of these downtown areas uh, now it's it's just 78 units um, piggybacking off of the cornerstone the plaza and then what's going to be a, a agora towers in total is less than 500 units yeah it, it it's it's just <laughs> the specific block that this is and what's around it that's that's my biggest concern and and <clears throat> no and again respect the concern uh, their studio units mm -hmm. for the most part one bedroom uh, again speaking and delivering to a specific client again a client that's just not having their needs met currently in town so again, we want to keep that person spending money in, in DeKalb. Um, it's two and a half acres. Mm -hmm. It's four separate buildings. Again, we still don't have the picture from the interior of this building, but I can promise you, once you see what this is going to look like on the interior, well, yeah, but I, but <laughs> it's going to be 78 beautiful, stunning homes. Yeah, it, it, I still. That's my biggest concern is, is really the, the number of units. But Now, what's a perfect number of units? Um, I don't think there is a perfect number, uh, but I, I'd like to see less than 40. I, I do understand the idea, though, you can't make the... There has to be a return on investment for you to yeah, develop Yeah, of course. So, yeah, so, at 40, it doesn't work. No, I'm not and, and, and that's... <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, I preferred uh, Steve Irving's proposal because of all it being single family homes and, and Steve Irving's proposal was great mm -hmm. he's a no, an absolute gentleman love the guy but uh, it just that concept 
has come into this town and has left this town. Nobody's been building them for years. Mm -hmm. Why? Because obviously they're just not working. And point out a lot of townhouse developments, you know, around the area and long-term success of them is, is kind of minimal. Well, um, Trixie, I do appreciate your... It's a, it's a, it's a, I, I yeah. do appreciate your sentiment because I think what you're saying, and I don't mean to paraphrase it, is that you'd rather see a long-term investment in someone living here than a short-term investment um, in someone living here, you know, on a year-by-year -year basis. Yeah, and, 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 that's, and that's why I was highlighting the idea. And it is a residential area. I mean, yeah, after all. Yeah, highlighting the well, idea Well, there's no question it's residential, and that's the beauty of having no commercial the beauty of having mm -hmm. all the green space, the mm -hmm. beauty of having yeah, I'm one of four the separate commercial. mansions yeah. <laughs> is how I'm, how I'm selling it. It's yeah. really four separate mansions in mm -hmm. town. And uh, I spent a lot of time recently just driving around the streets of, of the uh, old municipality building. And I encourage everybody to do so. Just look around. If you are totally satisfied with what this area looks like currently, sure, let's not develop. I don't think it's not developed. No, no, not, <laughs> not speaking towards, uh, hey, sorry, and I'm yeah, not building yeah, on yeah. your, mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. so no. So we answered your question, yeah. you're, you're good. So just, just you know, with, with, as the conversation kind of moves here, I don't think anybody driving around that area says, hey, I'm fully satisfied with what this area looks like. If the big fear in the room is that 78 high-end, stunning-looking units come into town, broken up into four separate buildings, all looking absolutely immaculate, blend in perfectly with the, the area, stunning landscaping all around, is going to hurt the area, then it would literally be impossible for me to convince that person the opposite. I, I would never be able to do that. But anybody who's willing to be open-minded and say, we're left here with, with a decision currently to go forward with these high -end, this high-end proposal, clean up the space, guarantee that this space is going to be well-kept, it's going to bring in top-notch talent, we'll never have issues with vacancy, We'll never have issues with parking. Let's move forward with this proposal. Right. Now, if somebody wants to take their chance and let this lot sit there and let the weeds crack through the foundation, let the weeds crack through the parking lot, and continue to let this building deteriorate in front of us, that's a separate option. Um, more by way of comment than question, um, a, a couple things I do like about the project. One um, bit of history, my wife is a professor at Penn IU. We moved here five years ago. Fantastic. I, I wish, thanks. Uh, I wish uh, we had had more of that available. I, I'm a realtor, um, and I've helped a number of friends uh, at the university unofficially find housing. Most of them that have been coming in have been looking for something like this. They're committed to the university. They're not ready to buy yet. They're looking for a place to live for a year or two while they get their feet wet and while they start to realize what neighborhood they want to live in, where they want to have a home. I think this serves that purpose. The other side of it too is I'm president, board president for Stagecoach Players, our local theater. Um, I think that this would prevent, present a vibrant community of people that are going to use the resources of our downtown, our restaurants, the theater, the hardware store occasionally. Yeah, um, of course. Things of that nature. So I, from my perspective, I think if it's done well, if it's kept up, if it's maintained properly, I think it presents a really positive possibility for that, that area. Steve, I appreciate those comments, and, and definitely being in the industry, you see that, right? You see that ask, and, and this may be somebody just, you know, retiring out of their home, you know, prior to the next station, or somebody that's in that uh, interim balance between, you know, getting to know an, a neighborhood, a, a community, a county, and then eventually transitioning in, into a house. So now they have that ability 
to come into this complex, live here, enjoy the downtown, see all the good things this town has to offer, and then hopefully make that next step if they, if they are moving out of the building to the house in town. So, yep, thank you, Steve. I'd like to add to, again, <laughs> being a, I don't know, 49 year resident of the area or something along those lines. Um, Raise you all, Max. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Clearly, you need a better prescription. Um, but but that having been said, I, I, you know, I, I do understand some of the concerns of the people that that have, that have voiced their opinions in terms of it wanting to remain residential um, rather than rental. Um, but that having been said, uh, I do appreciate the fact also that you know, you guys, I'm, I'm sure, have done your due diligence in figuring out whether you can make this work or not. And, and so I'm not I'm not questioning that and. You know, you know, I, I I had my doubts two projects ago, and uh, you know, obviously those were quelled. And so, um, I don't think you would be investing the money if you didn't feel that there was that type of a need out there. Um, I, I I don't have any fear of it being maintained properly, um, or or blending into the community as it were. So, um, uh, would I would I would I like to see more people move permanently to DeKalb and and take up those blocks? Yeah, um, of course, but. You know, obviously, there's a need for this too, and so I, I think that um, that's been identified. Yeah, and not just once. So. No, definitely, Max, and uh, and I really wish uh, most people can sit in on some of these conversations I have with people that genuinely are in this area because of what we offer, or are staying later in this area because of what we have to offer. I, I, I that's something I can never bring to this, you, you know, to, to this room. But uh, it's there, it's palpable, and it's real. And you know, there's people out there that say we're you know building empty apartment units. That's that's called clinically insane, right? <laughs> <laughs> and 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 that's not the case here. There's not only a demand. There's a level of demand that we simply cannot keep up with. And especially with all of the new great news coming into this community that level of demand is only continuing to rise. This has always been a beautiful town. This has always been a beautiful beautiful community. We're finally now adding this, we're, we're kind of changing with the, the tides here. And these high end turnkey living style apartments close to downtown areas is where the future is moving. So we're either gonna move with them or we're just going to pause and take a deep breath and watch weeds grow. What I'd like to point out to everybody, too, is that you may not be aware of it, but there's a tremendous amount of rental property in the downtown area of DeKalb. Um, several years ago, a gentleman was here trying to make a proposal for the old Haish building on Fisk, and there was a, a gentleman and his son who had 500 rental units downtown DeKalb. And if you drive around 2nd, 3rd, 4th Street, I mean, there's a lot more than you ever thought was it is, here yeah. and so uh, there is you know again if there's a need for it and then so be it there's no question I would not be here if there wasn't okay um, uh, if I can we'll go back to the public comment portion real quickly um, uh, and again I apologize if I don't have these in order but um, I'll ask Miss Bessie Kronopoulos to come to the <laughs> it's because I love to see your smiling face <laughs> All right, appreciate everybody's time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's see what's going on. Due diligence, you mentioned. That's been in the back of my mind for this project and the other projects. There was couple of things mentioned uh, here. And in listening to the conversation, I'm wondering why I'm even bothering to come and speak since quite a while ago, when City Hall was moved rather quickly, it was pretty much a foregone conclusion that this is what we were going to be looking at. And of course, when the uh, three proposals were before the council on the 14th, there was a recommendation from the staff 
And there's a recommendation here now. So one wonders, what's the point of coming and speaking? Because the public is at the bottom of the list. I can't fight. I can't fight City Hall anymore, Bill. But I can stand up for what I believe is best for this city. Due diligence. Michael, you mentioned three items, three uh, similar facilities. There's more than that. I'd almost forgotten by God getting old. Brain forgets. There's Cornerstone, there's Plaza de Calb, there's Agora, which is still mm -hmm. being built, and uh, of course, the, the new one, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of the one next to the Fifth Third Bank, but then there's the other one out on Annie Glidden, and now, supposedly, this one. Very similar kinds of projects which supposedly are going to fill this niche for high-end, sort of extended stay, short-term stay types of facilities. When the proposals were, were, came forth, those three proposals, the Pappas proposal, the Irving proposal, and the Mason proposal, there was some interesting discussion about, and you're, you're flat out wrong as far as uh, this is the only way to go and people don't want the little houses. They do. That is the trend. I Googled that because somebody, and I found an explosion of desire for smaller houses among the millennials. That being said, Trixie, you bring up the density issue. That's a biggie. That's a big issue. And we're not probably not going to feel the impact of this until I'm pushing up daisies. And somebody is going to, and this is how I ended my conversation with council on the meeting of the 14th. <laughs> Years from now, people are going to look back and see these decisions that have been made, and they're going to wonder, what the heck were they thinking? What the heck were they thinking? This body is probably the second most important body that governs this city, first being the city council. You have a huge responsibility because it's about planning. And yet, over the last five, six some odd years, I have yet to see continued meetings, a lot of cancellations and very little training for the plan commission people to find out what good planning and planning concepts are all about. You're kind of almost, please, I don't mean to, to, to belittle which because I know you, know you study your stuff and everything, but there's more to it than that. And yet staff has not allowed that to happen, has not allowed you to educate yourselves so that you can really make decisions based on sound planning practices. Sound planning practices. Uh, oh, Lord. What, you know. uh, I'm, I'm going to take issue with that, Bessie. Um, what? You know what? You we, can take issue all you want. Well, but, no, you know what? But you in all not fairness, being, no, no, no. Not being you know what? You we volunteer to do this. I know you and do. And we God spend a tremendous amount of time doing our homework on top of it. The I staff know. provides us with the packet of information that we can go through, but anything above and beyond that, we can figure out for ourselves, and we do. No, I mean, I do not. spend a lot of time driving through that information. I've driven to these places and looked at it. I ended up on the front page of the Chronicle because I argued about a hotel in front of my neighborhood. <laughs> so I, I, I do take issue with the fact that you are, are saying that we're spoon-fed this information. We take this very seriously. We do do our due diligence on top of the things that are given to us, and we do take it very personally. So we're not here to rubber stamp anything. Well, only time will tell how it, you still need some training. You still need some. What am I missing? Wait. You, you do. I, I don't mean that in a I mean, bad way. I mean, 50 years in this town has taught me quite a bit. That's not enough. And getting your information only from one source is not that enough. That is not the case at all. No. I mean, I ask about, and again, look at the people that are sitting on this council. They all represent various business factions, not even me, but various business factions from everywhere in the community. So I think you do have a very diverse opinion up here. And I think these people are equally concerned. And again, they, we do this because, and, and, and we do do our due diligence, and well, we do see, rely on you know, the, the staff reports to the extent that we can go back 
and explore things for ourselves. And that's, that's our responsibility. And I guarantee you there's never been one time that I was ever given one that I didn't go back and look at a plan or I looked at, you know, the, what's the MILS list um, from the county on top of it or drive out to that particular location. So it's it's not. It, it, and then the other. Okay, you're the oversimplifying other question, it. I'm sorry. I suppose this was public comments, but then again, like I Please said, do. the public comments are at the bottom of the list. Uh, but <laughs> made me lose my train of thought here. Uh, comprehensive plan. Do we have one? Have we had one for the last 10, 15 years? No. The housing stock. And here's what I mean by training. Perhaps I'm using the words improperly, but have we really taken a close look at the housing stock in this community? It was mentioned before that there are older houses all around. There's older houses all over this community. There are some phenomenal houses that, given some of the talents that you have, John, that you and other developers in this community, you can come in and help to redevelop and revamp some of the older housing stock which would provide wonderful housing for, for people who want to come and live in this community. Those are the kinds of things that need to be looked at diligently I, and we are not looking at that. I, I could not agree with you more. I would well, love then let's to do something I would, about I would it. love to see somebody come in with, you know, in, in some type of resurgence, put more money back into the housing stock okay. that's here and, and re nurture it. that. But you know what? I'm going to go back to the same point that every time a restaurant's built in this town, somebody tells me that we need, you know, a, a, a Chick fil A. Uh, again, uh, yeah, I, really I, what this okay. comes down to is supply and demand and the people that are willing to invest the money into the town. And we yeah. have to listen to them and respect them as Fine. well. Then and if I can't find a Boston Market or if I can't find. Exactly. Okay, let you know, me ask another question, if I may. Absolutely. I think uh, this is, uh, the property here is being bought for like 600000 Did I read? Because I only quickly read through the, the information. It was like 600000 It'd be interesting to find out how much money had been spent on that entire property over the decades as previous councils uh, acquired property throughout the years because the dream was to have that as a municipal facility which is a block away from the downtown and the other question the other thing that just came up too I can't remember which one of uh, who, where it came from but there's a lot of uh, property rental property in the downtown area well by golly gumbo how many of those structures that are there the older structures can be revamped with TIF dollars instead of pouring it into this or pouring it into the Algora can that three million dollars have been uh, used to revamp some of those for some very nice fancy lofts above existing retail stores? Sure it could have. And as far as parking, some people are very concerned about parking, and rightfully so. The property for Plaza de Calb, that was helped out a bit by the purchase of, I think it was 100000 John, that you bought it for, the parking lot. Every single resident Mm -hmm. And that, but yeah, that, that was before or after. Yeah, type of thing. So, and then the other thing, as far as how careful we are, when the cornerstone was built, if I'm not mistaken, it's been I can't even remember how many years ago now, but it maybe could have been set back further on the first street, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they came. This was Betsy, you would remember. They didn't, they, they didn't push back enough and they wanted to come back and reconfigure, but rightfully council said, no, that's not going to be, we're not going to allow that to happen. Point being, the plan commission at that time maybe did not look at it as carefully as they should have any more than staff looked at it as carefully as they should have. Rightfully, council did the right thing and did not allow a reconfiguration of that whole area because you didn't want to do a setback. So. There's things that need to be scrutinized a lot more carefully, I guess is what I'm saying. I, I, I appreciate that, Bessie, and, and again, I'll, I'm going to go I'll back to my point. One other, with one other thing, and this is the last sure. thing that I said to the council at, at, at the September 14th meeting. Ages ago, when there was a little alderman who I wish that she knew then what she knows now, 
asked the question when there was new apartments being built west of Annie Glidden, what's going to happen to the apartments, the older apartments, that are east of Annie Glidden? And I answered my own question, Annie Glidden North. And how much is it going to take? How many resources is it going to take to revitalize that section? Because we didn't think before we built. We got to think long term, 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for your service. John, please. And I'm sorry, um, yeah. Good evening. Yeah, if, please. The statement yes. she made about Cornstone and the setback, totally false. Totally false. I don't think she gets it. But I give her credit for not locking herself in the basement and she, at least she comes to the meetings. That's more than Joe Biden does. Anyway, bottom line is pretty simple. Cornerstone paid $20,000 for a study to incorporate additional space for the whole entire intersection. Council voted it down, which we were fine. But I want you guys to know, not even an inch, Cornerstone was built on the same foundation that Otto's building was. We did not violate or we did not encroach into First Street or Lincoln Highway. So she needs to get the story straight. I appreciate that. Thank you, John. Just for the record. We didn't change anything. Papa's development, Cornerstone paid $20,000 to the city, to the city John, John, for a study. I, no, no, that, no, yeah, no, those I, are the facts. I, I, I understand. Hold on a second. No, yeah. those, those are the facts. We're not here to argue. I'm, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I had enough of her BS for 40 years. I'm not going to sit here and take it anymore. Well, she's going to outlive all of us, unfortunately, you, so. <laughs> no, she's like my first time ex watch. Keeps on ticking. I God appreciate bless it. Her. But, but I, I'm and, just and telling you the fact. And I appreciate your. $20,000. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. The check that. did and, clear the bank. And, just and for, I just, just want to move on record. to the next point. So. Just for the record. Thank you. Um, uh, Pam Olson, um, 511 Franklin Street. Could you please come forward? The parking does concern me a lot. Oh. I live on Franklin, and my guests can't park in front of my house now because every neighbor parks there. They have to park down the street. I want a sign that says no parking, resident parking only. Because when he comes in there, and if they have a guest, where are they gonna park? You know, he's saying that there's enough room for one and a half cars. Well, what if it's a couple? Contrary to what you said, a lot of them will have two cars. Where are the guests gonna park? Those streets are old. We're bringing in 78 more cars or double that up and down those old streets. My street is a very narrow street. And if they're not gonna be able to come in off of 4th, that means they're gonna be zipping up and down Franklin and Grove. And you can see all the cracks in Grove right on there. Are those streets gonna be improved? I, I can't speak to that, <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, what is it going to take for me to get a sign in front of my house that says no parking from here to, to alley? Well, and, and please understand, too, that this, even if it gets passed by us, this will go through, you know, city council for a meeting, and you, you're, you can definitely address it at that stage, too, to make sure that, you know, this is perhaps a little bit more cohesive to something that you're going to be willing to live with in your area, so. Not if, my, if I can't even have company at my own home, and they're going to be dragging in that many more people. Just a quick response, as I mentioned, uh, the, for the UDO, there's adequate parking, 10 extra spaces. And by Frankenstein, there's no parking on either side right now, but if there's a need for another there is sign. There is on my side. There is, okay. In front of my house where every neighbor parks. We can certainly look at, you know, uh, it's more through engineering and police with parking, Absolutely. You know, different parking restrictions as things change in neighborhoods, but um, we can certainly take a look at that. It's already a frustration. I, mean, I, I certainly don't want anybody to think that we're not going to accommodate the surrounding residents mm -hmm. uh, in approving this, uh, you know, wholeheartedly. It, it's it, it's going to take some adjustment for everybody, and if that's a concern of yours, then that's definitely something that we as a community need to address and make sure that you're comfortable with. Yeah, like I said, it's bad enough now. I can't imagine when when that comes, unless I get a sign that tells people they quit parking in front of my house. You know, it's bad when you can't have your own company there. 
I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I do have one more person on the list. Um, Rita and John McNatt. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your last name. If you could come to the podium and just state your name and address and Oh, thank God. <laughs> Lord. All right, so um, Rita and John McNatt, 220 South 5th Street. Um, we look directly over at the parking lot and the mayor's garden. Um, we moved here a year ago. Happy anniversary to us. Um, because we wanted to live close to a downtown area. Uh, we wanted to walk to downtown. We wanted to be on a cobblestone street. We wanted a historic house. Our house was built in 1895. So a couple things, comments we have is, as lovely as the cornerstone is, and let me give them props, and their commercial and residential is downtown, um, the proposal for the facade that you're gonna drop in our residential area um, looks like a country inn and suites. Um, it does not fit in our neighborhood. Um, if it could be more brownstone looking, more historic looking to fit the neighborhood would be wonderful. Um, I don't think a sign on the front of each building is required because it does make it look like a hotel. Um, and then um, the comment about it being wonderful on the inside, that's great, but we can't see the inside. A um, couple other things, 90 to 100 feet uh, buffer from where? We're on 5th Street. You didn't mention 5th Street. You mentioned 4th and Frank. That's the street. That's the Okay, but okay, the 90 to 100 foot buffer though, is that from like our curb to the front door? That's I, from, am I misunderstanding yeah, something? What's the, what's the buffer? The, it's 90 feet from the, the homes on 5th Street and Franklin to the edge of uh, the buildings, the two buildings that are. The buildings, not yeah, the curb. The buildings between okay. the two structures. Okay. Um, another question is on the, um, the graphic, there's 15 feet in the front of green space and 18 in the back why can't that be shifted back a little bit more because if you're only having parking spots and garages in the back why the need for the green space um, in the back more than in the front uh, right now we can along with our neighbors sit on our front porches and we can watch the sunset um, a two-story building sitting right in front of us now that kind of defeats the purpose of, you know, why we bought our lovely house. Now, do you mind me answering the question directly? Sure. Oh, now, if, if there's a, a way we can shift the building, uh, there's no question we would. Now, something tells me with engineering there's no way we, we can, to be quite frank. Now, what I definitely want to do is that landscape that you're going to be staring at is going to be not only existing, it's going to be so robust that and again, if you look at a building, the built up landscaping, you will not, you will not miss a beat. It'll look better than staring at the empty parking lot. I can promise you that. Okay. Um, so the next one is um, when Cornerstone was advertised in 2018, the rents were $1,200 to $1,400, and now they're down to $1,200. I'm just curious. They're not down to $1,200. That's nobody, what's online. Nobody does my book. There's no I do my own bookkeeping, and I, I do the rest. I'm, we're not out here today to chase empty buildings. That's not how you make money, okay? These developments work, and that's why we're here. And if you're worried about my occupancy, it'd be like you worrying about me paying my mortgage. It's irrelevant. There's not a chance that I would be here willing to take on additional risk, additional debt, additional headaches, additional this, for empty buildings. I mean, that's one, that's a, one second. So there's not, there's a demand here. There's a strong demand here. And I can promise you, there's not a chance I would be pushing forward with this deal had the demand not been there, because it's impossible to service that debt, okay? This town is losing a lot of more so than it could ever believe it is happening. And a lot of people might not want to hear it, but it's the truth. 
yeah, yeah. They want these hotel style, hotel style condos. And if we can't provide that, we're gonna lose them. Now, this, this facility now is gonna come into your neighborhood. So obviously you should care and I'm, I'm happy that you're here. It, it, the past meeting I was here, I said, I even thank Bessie for coming out here and voicing her opinion because I, I wish everybody would come out here, community members and all, to voice their opinion. I think it's fantastic. Because the last thing I wanna do is be a bad neighbor. Now, we really spent a lot of time on the design of this building, a lot. We redesigned it, uh, we added some elements that we're really thrilled about. We talked to a lot of community members. Some said it's the most beautiful building they've ever seen. You know, I, I don't know if I'd go that far, but that's, that's, some of them said it's literally the most beautiful building they've ever seen. Now, when it comes to buildings and design, if you ask 12, 13 people, you're gonna get 35 different opinions, right? So that's a tough one. That's a tough one with the design. The design on landscape though, it's going to be heavily landscaped. You will look out at this new building and absolutely love it as part of your town. And I can promise you all the tenants and your new neighbors, you'll be extremely fond of. Well, and we don't disagree with the landscaping because we know the type of building it is that it's managed by you. It's not managed by an individual homeowner. So we get the landscaping will be wonderful but it's just the facade that does not fit in our neighborhood of 1895, 1865, 1900, you know. Uh, I couldn't agree more and I drove, you know, I've been spending the last couple of weeks driving around the area and it is, it's stunning, beautiful homes. I, a lot that have been forgotten about, but it is, a, it is an absolutely beautiful, no, I'm no. not saying you specific. <laughs> a lot. I said a lot. You know, there's a few. There's there's a few that have been forgotten about. So I'm yeah. extremely close to the property. You you can't argue that. All you really need to do is drive around. But but then you're left with this absolutely beautiful community um, that wants to keep that small time town charm, and that's why we went with this soft three different front elevations, a lot of roof elevations, plan, just a two-story building to fit as much as it can. I get it, it's not single family homes. Uh, and the building at some point has to have a level of practicality for us, well, right? We can't, I'd love to build a Parthenon for you, but I can't do that. With now, all due respect too though, I, I, I will say, and this is, coming from 35 years in advertising and marketing, I don't think that we need a brand on the building. I agree. As it's being proposed. I have no issues removing the sign. That, that's, those signs are very expensive. I, especially four of them, I couldn't agree more. That's overkill. That's well, a disaster. Well, maybe on Fourth Street where you no, might have a model I, home. You have my word as it sits here. I, I need definitely some signage but I do not need signage on all four buildings. So I will take that back to my design team and that's something I will definitely address. Something at a ground and, level that's- Yes, I couldn't agree with that more. I, I don't wanna show up there like a billboard. The neighborhood. Yes, I agree with that. Even if you add some dormers to the, to the roof, fake dormers or something to give it a little more character to fit the neighborhood. Listen, we're, so, it's a work, we're open-minded to a level of, of the design ideas. And honestly, you know, we're easier people to talk to, I think, than most think. If you were to, to call me, call my father, believe it or not, we'd probably meet you within 30 minutes, probably as long as it took you to meet us. And any time we get a genuine idea, you, I can promise you, we go above and beyond to really marinate that idea and, and have it work because we're always looking for ideas. We end up having to pay people for ideas. So if you can come to me with a beautiful free idea, you know, you because you know the area, <laughs> I couldn't, I, that, that to me is the best thing on the planet, the yeah. best thing I could ask for. So I am all ears, 100%, we're both all ears here to really fitting in with a neighborhood. Now I'm not telling you I'm completely changing the building, but if there's something you wanna see as far as darkness of brick or uh, you know, the way some things look, Signage, 100%. Let's sit down, let's have an in-person meeting, wherever that's at, and I will take 100% into account what you're looking for, and, and definitely the signage should be eliminated. Thank you for those comments.
you got anything? I just, I got a couple of things. The first thing, one of the first things you said tonight was that you talked to a lot of members of the community and they were all excited about it. I live five feet from your building and you didn't come to my front door. Which well, I don't, know? listen, we're, we're in the COVID environment. If I start knocking on people's door, they're gonna send me to jail. Now, these are people that have called me, they've reached out to me, people I know that live in the area. I can just start knocking on people's doors. That, so, so you're right, I, I may not have come uh, to your you door because I didn't come to anybody else's. You also said something about that the, you know, you asked the neighbors, are they satisfied with the neighborhood? We were very satisfied with it when we bought the house was the reasons why my wife had expressed. Now those are gonna be taken away. Okay, and then my only other really- So now the reason was for the municipality building? No, the park. The park, the park and the in open general, area the across the street. You know. We had a pretty view. We probably yeah, they live right next door to us. We don't look at a parking lot. We look at the garden. Oh, the garden. I mean, there's going to be plenty of vegetation and beautiful landscape there. Well, I understand that, but there's also going to be four big ass buildings there, too. <laughs> so, all right. And then my other concern was that, or two things, maybe. Um, it seems to could be. You, uh, you drive around the town, you look at your property, each other. you know they're your property. They're identifiable as Pappas properties. Back they're there, very well, you know. they look fantastic. The I appreciate that. Thank you. Speaking the mic. Now, this project oh. you're John, about now John, should be John. John. What, could you the microphone just so for the well, benefit of the people here? Yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> John McNatt, uh, we get along. just for That's the benefit awesome. of people here, yes. could you speak into the microphone, please? The, the point. Thank you. The point I'm trying to make on this project is it's, in my opinion, it's two two projects: the Fourth Street side and the Fifth Street side. The Fourth Street side is all resident, or is business, more business kind of stuff. Fifth Street side is strictly residential, so that's why we have a big issue with that facade. It's like, I don't know the name of your architect, but I'm familiar with his work, because I see it at every exit on every highway in America. It's a hotel, plain and simple. And then, and then my other issue is the density that Trix, Trixie brought up. Your other projects, you know, they have a certain amount of density, um, but they're not in residential areas like, like we are. And, and uh, the recommended acreage for this project is 6.1 acres, and the site is 2.5. So you're jamming a lot of product in a small hole. And that, that's my concern. And, and other than that, that's it. Well, again, this product's different, it's, right? It's studio apartments, and we're meeting the uh, city's requirement as far as per door requirement for parking. I think of all issues you, you may be concerned about parking, honestly, from, from what I've seen, should be at the, at the bottom of that list. I, I, I think good. it's amazing that you, you bring it up. And by the way, thank you and your wife for being out here today and, and voicing genuine concerns for this project. Honestly, thank you. Um, but uh, the as far as the eyesore, what it, honestly, open discussion here, what do you see on this building that I could add to make you happier to look at this in the morning? All right, let's hear from the. <laughs> I would say the, the main door needs a bigger awning, like a front porch look to it. Okay. It needs dormer, uh, third floor fake dormers. Um, I don't know what else. I'd have to Google some stuff, but that, you know, that, it just looks it looks like a hotel. Could I, I respect that? How about this? We're all in attendance here today, right? Anybody in attendance here today that has a genuine design concern or ge actual concerns about this development in a, in a more informal setting where we could actually get to know each other because I think we'd all get along. Call me, I'm gonna leave my contact information in front and we're gonna schedule a meeting and I can promise you, not only will your design ideas be impact the project, we will have plenty of future discussions as this moves forward to make sure 150% that the neighborhood is taken care of, the neighborhood is respected, and we are only uh, you know, uh, uh, members and friends of, of this neighborhood. We're not coming in here to just stamp something. That's, that's not the case. We, we live in this town, we see too many people. No, it we, would be awkward for us to do so, trust me. And we know <laughs> of your, we've only been here a year, so, but we know of your reputation still, which, which is stellar. Only a year, but you're here speaking in council, which is fantastic. Well, yeah, we were, which we're at a beautiful. meeting about some other building a while back, I don't know. There you go. But you know, we moved here to, to, for our view, for our cobblestone street, for our historic house. We, we moved here to walk to the hardware store, to walk to Lincoln Inn and Ferrandez. Yep. I mean, that's what we do. And I see people that move there doing that. Yep. Um, and 
and and I can appreciate that, but just the the look of it and dropping it right there just and I can promise you that a lot of the traffic generated from this building is going to be traffic you're going to want to see. Now, if this stays abandoned, that'll draw traffic you don't want to see. I mean, it's the truth. There's an, that's an abandoned building. Next door is an abandoned building. Drive around just that immediate building. If, you know, call it I, what it is. If I could interject for a moment, I, I think um, the aesthetics, which is what you're talking about, of the building are important and are need, they need to be negotiated. They need to be discussed. They need to be agreed upon. The bigger concern right now is, is this a good idea for the community? Does it fit in the zoning best interests of the city? So I think that the Pappas's and, and the community around that do need to sit down, do need to discuss aesthetics. But for tonight, at this point, I think the most important thing is for us to decide, do we as a commission believe that we should move forward with the project, present it to city council? Uh, um, Steve, and I appreciate and you bringing there, that up. There, there are certainly caveats that need to be um, addressed, but I, I agree with you wholeheartedly um, that our decision tonight is to decide whether moving forward with it in this form with, you know, again, with restrictions or changes to the exteriors, et cetera, is a good idea and and that's our job tonight to decide that and so with that if anybody else would like to address uh, uh, the Can podium. I just say one more thing? Oh, absolutely. Sorry. Please do. In the last presentation or the last comments the the federal political stuff should have stayed out of it at the city level. I wasn't there. What was the political stuff? <laughs> yes, please. If you Yeah, please. Can I have the mic? Um, just Name and address, please, for the, for the record. Trent Sexton. I live at 226 South 5th Street. Um, in the original plan, I know that there were the, uh, the four buildings, and not all of them had the same amount of units in them. Um, am I correct in the two lower density units or the two buildings to the south and the two higher density ones are the ones to the north? Perhaps one thing that might help just a little bit for the neighbors on the South 5th Street would be to make the two lower density ones on that side, since there's definitely more of a business side on the 4th Street and make the two higher density units over there. Just a quick thought, possibly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that, I'd like to close the public hearing. Real quick there. Uh, I just want to say that that request is actually doable. Dan, don't forget that you've got some folks on Zoom yes. that would like to comment also. Oh, good grief. I'm sorry. So is are anybody else in the in the room want to speak? We do have, uh, I was given one name on Zoom, Sada Prescott, that wants to speak off Zoom. So we believe her video will come up. Hello. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Sada Prescott. I live at 420 Franklin Street immediately in front of the proposed wind tunnel of a parking lot. Uh, I have definitely come to voice my very strong opposition to the Papus uh, Dam buildings. Uh, I, I've been at my house for one year. I bought it explicitly for two reasons. The first is that it was literally cheaper to purchase a house in this town than to rent an apartment. The second is that it has a beautiful community garden in front of it that feeds human lives. And this is being proposed to destroy that for the purpose of one person's pocket. Do you know the term gentrification? Do you understand what it means? The proposal Ms. Prescott, I'm going to stop you for one moment because I'm not sure that anybody is not. going to. I'm not going to be talked to. I'm not sure that anybody time. is talking about who's going to rent here. So I, I think that's inappropriate. What's inappropriate? Uh, the term gentrification for this neighborhood and or the apartment term complex. term is explicitly so. That is intentional and it is right. Furthermore. This guy has said, oh, I have the experience of 40 years. I doubt you're 40 years old. I don't care 
about your your 40 year olds, your your theoretical piggybacking on your father's 40 years. You haven't provided a real rationale with real numbers. How many apartments have you filled and how long? You cannot both say that you are providing for long term residents and talk about, oh, yes, we definitely are bringing these for the people who want to spend a year or two in it before they move into a real house. That's what we need, real houses. I was just talking with a bunch of other new hires at NIU who can't find houses because we have such a tight market. They aren't looking for a bunch of bullshit, tiny ass apartments. Ms. Prescott, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to interrupt you and ask that you um, maintain your decorum or I'm going to have to cut you off. Understood. I do not have to swear to express my absolute rage. Furthermore, in order to find out about this, I received a letter on September 22nd, as I understand it, after you'd already put forward all these um, or made the decision on building this. That is absolutely not enough notice. And, and, <sighs> mm, no swearing. All right. I'm going to ask that you, that you finish your thought, please. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm going to ask that you finish your thought. Um, uh, collectively so that we can move forward. I would very much like to see an actual proposal for a rent controlled or economical uh, living space. That would be great. I would like to see something that provides an actual community garden space as already exists that is necessary. I would like to see something that shows that it will uh, actually compensate the surrounding area for the increased cost to um, our heating, our plumbing I'm costs. not even sure where you're going with that. If there is a wind tunnel in front of my house, my heating bill is going to go up. And okay. I can document All right. that well, and show it. Ms. Prescott, I, I will say that, that the Pappasus have agreed um, uh, politely to, to hold an off-site meeting with the people of the surrounding community um, and have those discussions. And so I would encourage Frankly, you. Frankly, I don't trust him at all, and I want his well, words on then, record. Then, then I think you need to sit down and have that conversation with them personally. Um, it's but, not going to be personal. It needs to be filmed and held to instead of just lied about. Well, so we can and, get and again, money. I'm going to go back to the point that you're in a public forum right now in a voting committee of the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. This will go to city council afterwards which you are more than welcome to present your case and or discuss in, in the interim. But I encourage you to have those conversations between now and then. Um, and, and I do appreciate your, your frustration. Um, but that having been said, again, I think we need to move on to the next point. You have let everyone else finish their thoughts. I, I apologize. I if continue. there's something else that you need to express, please do. I want square footage on green space and proof that it will contain food products. I want proof of interior concept. I want proof of continued maintenance with a commitment contractually for at least a 10 year period instead of selling it off whenever it becomes inconvenient. I, I don't think those things are commercially feasible. Five year costs. And, and, I, and again, I appreciate your thought. But again, this is a commercial property. Uh, this is being purchased for the purpose of creating apartments. And so I, I'm, I, I appreciate the fact that you're going to miss the garden. Um, I'm sure several, a lot of people will. But you know, it, it's, it's a commercial piece of real estate that's being purchased for the purpose of putting apartments on it. It's being purchased from the city who should care about the good of its people. I don't think we're not. Anyway, um, and again, if there's anything that needs to complete your thought, please do it um, in short order. I, I, I appreciate your frustration. I really do. But we do need to move forward. I see that you are fully endorsing this man's stupidity. It's all in there. Uh, again, uh, I'm going to ask that you behave yourself. Um, and, and so if you have a difference of opinion, 
I invite you to go to have that conversation with him, and there's a much longer process that's going to happen between now and the time that it actually gets set. So you can be a, an active participant as much as you choose to, but I would also ask you to be polite. Mr. Chair, could I uh, offer a suggestion with, uh, what you're, if you're approaching a motion? I am. Uh, eventually, uh, the exhibit C shows the staff comments remaining as I mentioned, the final development plan would have to be submitted showing the engineering, et cetera. You probably, there's been discussion on the elevations, how the buildings look, and the applicants indicated they're willing to take a look at some things. So if you want to add final architectural elevations to that list of final development plans that includes a final architectural I would. elevations, that should be part of the motion that you probably make. And I think those are some of the conversations that, that they've been willing to have with the public at large. So yes, uh, I, I, I guess what I'm going to ask is how I should characterize it in, in terms of asking for the motion with the caveats of the elevations. Well, the sample motion is written in at first to exhibit A, B, and C, so it, all you'd have to do is add the that part of exhibit C that the final architectural elevations be part of that final development plan, uh, something final beyond what's being presented. Um, Okay. And also, what, who you want reviewing that. The way it's proposed is the staff would review that, but it sounds like um, if you want to come back to the commission on that, you need to make that, if that's what uh, you I, want, or recommend. I'll ask the commission, but I, I, I believe that that's important to everyone here. Would you agree that we review this again? Okay. So after your recommendation, that would go into the council, ordinance would be approved, and then in the future, they develop, before they can start work, a final development plan, final landscape plan, as we talked about, and the final elevations, bring that back for yes. review. What I really want to see here is a vote on the existing product with a guarantee that we're going to go back and work some minor changes to this building. But I can promise you, if there's a major change expected in sight or a major change uh, maybe promised to, to some people in, in the audience, I don't see it happening. I mean, we're, we're, we're willing to work with everybody to a certain level, and, and we will, and we want to make this uh, as, as neighborhood friendly as possible. But uh, Well, it's my understanding, and, and to, if I'm interpreting this correctly, most of those objections are cosmetic, but I'm going to open it up to a, a question by the council um, and any opinions that they might have so I can gather everybody's opinion. So if you'd please um, weigh your opinions. I have no problem with, um, with rezoning for multifamily development. I just, it's too many units. I do not feel comfortable with that. Um, above and beyond that, I, I am interested in your flexibility with design and um, some choices that way. I, I do like, and, and this is something that I don't know if it, it, it wouldn't obviously be a contingency, but this might be something that would be worth looking at, is I do agree I like the community garden. I think it's a really, really nice aspect over there. Might there be a way that you guys could work with the community garden that maybe on some of the corner parcels of your development? That might be a nice way to integrate. There's no question. All people need to do is ask. Yeah. Again, we're much yeah. easier to deal no, with. And, I think majority of the time when people actually get to know us, they, I, I, they take a step back and say, you know, why didn't I approach uh, these gentlemen prior? No, because we are fully open-minded. Yeah, and so again, that, that community be, garden mm -hmm. right now, is a community garden because it's been you know a little bit subsidized. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be f all weeds and it's gonna be a disaster soon. So if we want to see an actual community garden or, or actually see this I space, I think the community garden group do do a nice job and that might be a nice. Uh, yeah, because right now it's it's sitting in abandoned space, you know. So so yes, I am full years uh, on on possibly bringing in an element of mm -hmm. a of a community garden, mm -hmm. uh, have you, uh, in can definitely promise that the community garden will not happen if this space sits empty for the next 10 years or 30 or 50. Yeah, the, it's, it's the number of units that's the hard thing for me. It, and again, uh, the units, the number that. of units, like I asked prior, what's mm -hmm. the perfect amount? Mm -hmm. And I didn't get a straight answer because there, no, it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough thing to say. Is it 20, is it 30, is it 100, is it 300? 
you know, you need a little density. Remember, we're a block off of the downtown area. Mm -hmm. If you want to move to this area, that means you want to walk to a plate. You want to walk to your restaurant. If you want to be in the middle of nowhere, I mean, again, we live in DeKalb County, pick your cornfield and move. Mm -hmm. You know, this is for people that want to walk to entertainment. And, and again, that's, we're not hiding from that. That's no, what we're building that. on. Yeah. And that's what this, this is a... a again, oh, this, this is no where the, question. I think this everything is where this conversation has, been, has to take place. Um, gentlemen, anyone else? Reed and John, I have, do you I, feel that... Uh, go ahead. Are you comfortable with your... Reed and John, are Chris, you comfortable? Sorry. <laughs> oh. All right. Are you comfortable with working with Mr. Uh, Pappas going oh, forward? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, Trent, we're going to have a fantastic conversation. Okay. That being said, I, I'm in favor of the rezoning. Uh, Thank you. The number of units doesn't bother me, so I would, I would propose that we can move forward and we can add in something in there about But I think if the neighbors are comfortable moving forward, this, this uh, meeting has served its purpose. So I, I'm comfortable with this motion as it's written here. So, Gentlemen? I don't know that it makes a lot of difference. The city is the petitioner. They've already pretty much agreed on all of this with the yes. petitioner. Regardless of what we say or what we do, they don't think it's going to affect one thing. It's going to go through and it's going to be approved. But this vote matters. Huh? I'm sorry, what you said? No, I, th I think this conversation here matters. I wouldn't say it just falls No, I, I think this is It doesn't helpful. matter in terms of the legality of approving right, it. Right, but no. overall, approving, I think, I think this has been, basically approved. Yeah, this has been uh, a... Well, and Dan, I guess I, what I would ask you is, again, it, understanding that he, you know, the Papasis has been very generously offered to have uh, meetings with, you know, again, trying to figure out a community garden, trying to figure out some of the landscape issues and, and maybe some exterior issues. Um, how do we move forward with the proposed amendment as it is or I'm sorry, the, 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 the motion as it is with the caveat that you know, some of those conversations take place before. I think all you have to do is just add that the final architectural elevations will be submitted Revisited. also and then brought back. If you want to see this again, this would be the way it's written, the motion, you won't see this again. You pass these plans and the rezoning that goes on to council, but um, that's, you won't see that again. So I don't know if that's something you want to see, the elevations. Uh, you okay with that? Uh, I mean, it, if it's approved, this plan, it's yeah. and the plan substantially in compliance with it. You, you got to approve it. You can't go back and understood. You know, uh, again, I you know I'm not uh, I, I don't profess to understand yeah. um, the density issue. Um, <clears throat> kind of is what it is. Again, you know, it's a supply and demand. I, mean, I think the demand's it, there. Chris uh, does. Chris has a comment. I think. Yeah, I have a couple of comments, if I could. Um, so back really quick kind of to what um, Stephen was saying, I think earlier, the question that I have, and I just wanna make sure that there's clarification on this, because I think the naming of this is a little confusing. Um, in line with the fact that we've got Isaac Sweet that we approved a few meetings ago. Can you confirm that this is not going to be like Isaac Suites? It's set to be a rental property for potential long-term renters. I know you said no less than 12 months, but I just wanna make sure that that is clear. And then is it possible to maybe come up with a different name for it? I like the name Johan DeKalb. Um, if this were to go through, maybe Johan Tower or something similar to um, Johan Plaza or something so that it's not confused with Isaac Suites. Because the one thing that I don't want to see happen in this neighborhood is something very similar to Isaac Suites where it's a come and you go extended stay type even and i'm talking extended stay not a week or two you know six months seven months eight months whatever um so can you confirm that for us all please yeah definitely and i i really think there's a misconception really of what uh, isaac was built for and really the stay for isaac right now i 
all the demand I have for Isaac just putting up the, the flag. We have the beautiful American flag waving, and right before that we have Isaac Executive Suites. Uh, unlimited amount of phone calls from the hospital. People wanting long-term stays for doctors that are visiting from uh, out of the state, out of this country, out of, you know, wherever they're from. So, uh, no, I don't think there come as you go tenants there either. Um, I, I, to your point, it, it may have been presented as that, uh, but that's just not the case. Uh, the new development we're proposing, again, will be minimum 12 month lease requirements, on average 65%, maybe in this development it's 70 percent of people stay longer than that first term. And just seeing what's happening at Plaza and what's happening at Cornerstone, we're gonna end up with a big percentage of the building being that empty nest or, or the person that's transitioning from the house to you know, call it the nursing home, where this ends up being this beautiful state for 10 years or seven years, however, however long that lasts. Um, so that's what this is for. Uh, it, it, uh, we are dedicated to longer term stay uh, folks. Not only is it a big, better business strategy, it's, um, it tends to be really the client we're chasing for the stuff we're building. Uh, again, this, the people that shift out of here are gonna be working professionals and the people that stay are gonna be downsizing empty nesters. So you will get long, uh, long period of stays, uh, definitely past the 12 month point. Maybe on average it's 18 months, 19 months, but it will not be a come as you go Motel 6. Thank you. I also would like to um, voice my opinion that I believe having a space for the community garden, if possible, would be very nice and very important. Um, it may give those residents there an opportunity to get involved in the community. The amount of people that are, are fed in our community from the DeKalb County Community Gardens, and I'm not part of that board, I'm not part of that, that volunteer project, but our churches and they feed a tremendous amount of people in this, in DeKalb. And I think having that garden available or a space for possibly where those residents could partake in that volunteer opportunity and to get involved in the community may be really important. I, I think that's a fantastic point. Uh, I think that'd be great if, if we're able to section off an area and continue that and bring, I mean, honestly, it'd be a, a big amenity for me with my residents to say, you know, if you want a little bit of therapy, go outside and, you know, uh, hang out with the tomatoes. And if residents in the areas wants to get involved in it, sure. Uh, definitely something I'm willing to look at. Uh, definitely something you see now in a lot of new developments. So I don't think it's a big ask. I think it's a simple ask, uh, interesting and cool ask. Uh, yeah. Definitely something we can- uh, It's been there for a long time and I think that would definitely ingratiate you to yeah. the community around it and, and so- I already shared my- Yeah. Did I not share my phone number today, right? That was-, that was well, eh, don't, don't lift it up in front of the camera, you know. <laughs> but, but no, I cannot wait to meet with more members of this community, honestly, because okay. we're here to be neighbors. Um, as a matter of formality, I think I have to close the public hearing. If we've had everybody that wants to speak. That, that has spoken to the issue. Um, anyone online? Okay. All right. um, with that, Thank I'll you. close the public hearing. Uh, I'll open it to comments from the commission members, which I think we've already probably discussed. But um, anything else that anybody would like to speak to? And again, with the if you want to, uh, um, sample with, motion is ready. If you just want to add the final architectural elevation review, just add that to the yes. end of the sample motion, and also to be reviewed by the commission and council. So if we add that sample motion, then that means this has to come back here next meeting, correct? Next meeting, just whenever, this will go forward. It'll go forward, but it has this to come back. This will be zoning, back. and the plans that you see will go forward to the council. And from what I'm hearing you say, Ron, it doesn't matter because it's gonna go through anyway. Well, as far as I can see, it doesn't matter. The city's petitioner. 
so it, it's kind of stalling the project and wasting more of our time. Go ahead, whether we go, so we'll go we as far as I well, can. Uh, that's uh, going correct. Okay. Tell me. I don't think that's wasting anyone's time because we're accommodating the people that have asked for architectural. Well, we've got uh, the neighbors here, though. The neighbors have correct, and, they, and so I hear, they, they bringing it back is not. No, I wouldn't call it a waste of time in the least. I, okay. I think it's a poor choice of words. But but I'm comfortable on, uh, w with the motion as it's written. Okay. Um, then I'll ask for well, uh, I, I would like to see, uh, I, I would like to see a second set of elevations just to, to be um, accommodating to the people that have expressed the interest in doing so, and I think I would be remiss if I didn't do that. So, I, I would ask for someone to motion um, for approval with the caveat that we, that that a new set of elevations be presented as, time permits. Yeah, there's nothing with the time. The, if you make the motion with that addition, this rezoning and the plans you see will go to the council. The zoning will be approved and those preliminary plans will be approved. And when they get to the point of doing the final plans, they'll have the final architectural renderings with the changes as discussed. That's kind of out of the And out of respect for the people that have you know, voiced review, their opinions. But whatever they come yeah. back with, that would come back through the commission and to the council. It doesn't, you know, uh, Really, to, but it gives the city some ability to say yes. That kind of met with what the residents were looking for. It's gonna it's gonna be four buildings. It's gonna match pretty much what you're seeing. There'll yep. be little tweaks to it, as just kind of discussed with some ideas with the uh, dormers and the canopies and uh, things like that. Taking the name off, perhaps. Um, again, won't I, be think much those are, I, I think based on what we've heard from the the people tonight, I think that's important for them. And so, um, as a community, I think that that. We move forward with the project and make those adjustments for the final renderings. I'll ask for a motion. Okay, I'll make a motion now. Based upon the submitted petition and testimony presented, I move the Planning and Zoning Commission forward its findings of fact and recommend to the City Council approval of the rezoning of subject site at 200 South 4th Street from CBD, Central Business District, to the PDR, Planned Development Residential District, and approval of a preliminary development plan as listed in Exhibit A to accommodate four two-story structures with 76 furnished dwellings and amenities, such as meeting space, exercise and recreational facilities, accessory parking, and green space, subject to the standards listed in Exhibit B and subject to the staff comments listed in Exhibit C and subject to final architectural evaluations to be brought back to the Planning Commission. So motion by Bill, seconded? I'll second. Seconded by Steve. All in favor say aye. Let's have a roll call. Oh, I'm sorry, roll call. Becker. Yes. McMahon. Yes. O'Flaherty. No. Klein. No. Doe. No. Chair Maxwell. Yes. So we have a three to three vote. I guess that motion would be moved forward as a tie. Um, any staff updates? Uh, we have another hearing. Oh, sorry. Let me flip down. Yeah, I need to get back to it. Good grief. Far back do I have to go? <laughs> Is there anybody here on the other one? On the coffee you shop? Let me read it or yeah, if you would, okay. please. I'm having Thanks. trouble finding it. It's a public hearing, a petition by Brian and Sue Allen for approval of a variance to Article 7.064B and 
Point six of the Unified Development Ordinance to allow a six foot high privacy fence to encroach eight feet into the front building line along Concord Court for the property located at 202 Concord Drive. I believe the applicant was planning 10 via Zoom. Hasn't responded, so. Brian, are you on uh, Zoom? Can you hear me? Is he muted? I think he's muted. I'm, I'm here. Okay, Brian. You didn't, didn't let me unmute at first. Okay, we've. Uh, I'll go through the uh, report. We're starting your hearing. Um, this is Brian Allen. I'll go through the report, and then Brian can follow up with any uh, information I missed, and then certainly available for questions. So there's a staff report in your packet. If I can get the... Uh, Graphics up on the screen. Sorry, what page? Are, what page of the packet? You there. Got it. Got it. Yeah. The uh, applicant is requesting a variance for a uh, fence. Um, the uh, aerial here shows a. Um, the applicant has an existing fence that pretty much goes from the edge of the home out to the edge of Concord Court and around the perimeter of the site up to the edge of the house. Uh, the fence is falling in disrepair. It's about five foot high privacy fence. Um, and he'd like to replace that with a new six foot high privacy fence. Uh, our UDO requires any fence that's privacy over three feet has to be, can't be in the front yard. So corner lot, it can't be in front, uh, and that's defined where the house is at. So um, you pretty much have to come straight from the edge of the house, straight south. He'd like to go eight feet into the setback uh, with the uh, eight foot high fence and to go around the site and replace the entire fence. The screen's not moving forward, but um, so that's the variance. He's only going eight feet in. He has some white pines in that side yard he'd like to save, so that's why the fence is located at that particular location. There's a survey showing how far that's in uh, on the site. Um, the fence was built uh, apparently with the house in 1985. The applicant bought the house in 2000. The fence was there, so um, he didn't create the, the issue. The fence was probably built before our current regulations or perhaps without a permit, we really don't know. So only going eight feet in the setback, but uh, nonetheless, a variance is required. So what do we look at for a variance like this? We look at the lot size. Um, and I did uh, show an area a little hard to see here, but his lot compared to some of the others, his corner lot is a little bit, probably one of the smaller corner lots, except the one of the south and the whole neighborhood. So he doesn't have a lot of room uh, in the backyard if he had to build a fence per the requirement. Adding that, putting that fence eight feet into the setback gains about 400 square feet of additional yard area into the about 3,500 he already has. So what we look at is the um, variance like this and why we do require or not allow these privacy fences in the front yard. We look at, we don't want them blocking the adjacent home. So as you can see, and a little training here on variances. So we look at the house to the south. They face uh, North Bridge road, not Concord Court, so that's important. If the house is facing this way and he had a six foot high fence way out along the sidewalk, that would kind of block the view of that house and not aesthetically pleasing, so that's key. It's not, uh, so it's going the other way, so that's important. Plus it's only going eight feet into the setback, not the full 25 feet where the current fence is, so. And some trees will block that uh, too. Um, kind of see the fence there on the right, it's leaning in to the site, so, and uh, a lot of trees there, so it probably won't even be seen at eight feet, so. Every variance, we have findings of fact with every type of zoning. Um, staff believes they're meeting all these requirements. Uh, again, it's uh, only eight feet into the setback. They're gaining some additional yard space. That corner lot is one of the smaller ones in the area. Um, the applicant didn't cause the issue. There was house uh, when it was built. The fence was built too, and when you bought the home in 2000, the fence was there. You'd like to repair it, uh, place it with a new one. 
some get some additional yard area. It will not affect the home to the south in terms of visibility or access or aesthetics. So we'd recommend uh, approval of the variance. Um, we did get a couple of correspondence from neighbors, uh, Michael and Robin Rothmeyer at 201 Concord Drive indicating support of the request. And also a citizen response form from Russell Whitoff and Anna Vargas at 209 Concord Drive. They also stated support of the request for the variance. Again, with variances, the commission has a decision. It's not a recommendation. You do approve or deny variances. You have the final say in these. And the sample motion is written for approving uh, this uh, variance with the uh, Exhibit A, which is the um, elevation or the uh, survey showing the fence location and also a detail of the fence, which is Exhibit B. Six foot high, nice looking fence. There's one. Uh, uh, sample what it would generally look like. Again, that's going to be back in the lot a little bit and probably not too visible. So, right, is there anything to, I missed? Do I have to open that for public comment or can I? Yes, you officially should. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, if anybody would like to speak to that publicly, please address the podium. If not, I'll close the public hearing and go to the Commission for comments. Is there anything, Brian, I missed or? Uh, pardon me. Was there anything I missed, Brian? Sorry, did I skip over you, Brian? You like no, it, Brian, it's, it's, you're breaking up, so it's hard to hear. The main thing is we just want the fence to look good. We, we planted these uh, white pines uh, in 2000, and they're actually going to block the fence, and it'll actually look nicer for the neighbors. And all the neighbors we've talked to uh, are in favor of it. No one has objected. Uh, we just want to keep the neighborhood looking nice. Uh, the old fence that's there is pretty bad. I think it's good to remove it. Mm -hmm. I certainly support this. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Any other comments? If not, I'll ask for a motion. I'll make a motion. Uh, based on the submitted petition, testimony presented, and findings of fact, I move that the Planning and Zoning Commission approve a variance to Article 7.06.4B and 7.06.6 of the Unified Development Ordinance to allow six foot high privacy fence to encroach eight feet into the front building line of, along Concord Court for the property located at 202 Concord Drive as shown in the site plan dated 9420, labeled as Exhibit A and per the fence detail labeled as Exhibit B. So motion by O'Flaherty. Second. Seconded by Klein. Roll call. Becker. Yes. McMahon. Yes. O'Flaherty. Yes. Klein. Yes. Doe. Yes. Wright. Chair Maxwell. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Brian. Okay, with that, are there any other Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Uh, just quick, uh, next commission meeting, October 19th. Uh, that's going to be held at the police department. There's a meeting in this at the library that evening with the council and finance and FAC on the budget. So we're going to meet at the second floor training room at the, at the police department. We have one hearing that's a variance for garage addition at 216 North 1st Street. May also have a plat of resubdivision for the Ferrera site on uh, Griller Road. Um, resubdividing that uh, for the future building. Um, and that's it at this time. Also, the Home Two Suites opened this past uh, week ago um, over there in South Annie Glen. So that's good news. Exciting news. Say we'll meet on the second floor of the police department. Yes, on the 19th. Okay. Email will send out for the packet. We'll bold type that reminder. So, any other comments? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Seconded. <laughs> Second by Chris. Thank you very much. And you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you.